Today on Girl Chat, Justin Bieber's Grammy debacle. Yep. If you missed it, you missed it. That's it, it's a wrap. And Safari is looking for a Valentine, is it you? Ooh, Lord. Mm -mm. And the hilarious Wanda Sykes and Guy Branham are here. The Reel starts now. to the family and friends of ex-NBA player Rasul Butler and his wife, Leah LaBelle, mm -hmm. who were tragically killed in a car crash early Wednesday morning in Los Angeles. This is awful news. We send out our deepest sympathies and condolences yeah. to their families. Yeah. Their family and our prayers. Yeah. yeah. First up, though, everyone always wants to feel included, especially when you're in high school. And recently, a mother shared a heartbreaking story about how she claims her 16-year-old daughter, Lulu, was bullied at her school because of her hair. Lulu, who attends high school in Tennessee, had recently started wearing wigs because she felt ashamed of a scalp condition which caused severe dryness, hair breakage, and loss. Now, upon seeing her in the wig, a male student was reportedly bet five bucks to rip it off her head in $5. the middle of the school. All for five dollars. Yeah. The alleged attack was videotaped and later posted to Snapchat <gasps> with the caption, Weave Snatching. The students then reportedly followed Lulu to the bathroom and videotaped her crying and begging for her wig back. But let me tell you how this story ends. Following the attack, Lulu decided to shave her head to take back control. She posted this picture with the hashtag shame free to let everyone know that she refuses to let her bullies win. Yes, girl. Wow. Ladies, what do oh, you think of this? This is so upsetting. It's infuriating just watching the video. You want to go through the screen and, like, snatch the boy and be like, what, what is, is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. Who does this? So, like, th that is just absolutely terrible. I also want to know who are the parents of the young man. Yeah. yeah. And I say that because... For five dollars. For five dollars, this is what your child thinks is okay yeah. to do. Yeah. Well, how heartless do you have to be to do something like this? But you have to give more credit to Lulu, who stepped up and the way she handled that. I'm 34 years old and she handled this better than I would. Right. And she's only 16. Yeah. Being able to flip it and turn a terrible moment into something positive and saying, you know what, I'm gonna own this. Might I add, she looks fly with the bald head. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. The she entire um, the incident is still being investigated, and the school released a statement saying that they intend to prosecute those involved yes, to the fullest Thank you. extent they of the law. Should. They should. They should. There should always be repercussions from this. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that you brought up the parents, Adrian, because kids have to be taught that behind every person and their differences lies a story. There's mm -hmm. always something to set us apart. And I didn't realize that, even though I got bullied in school, I truly didn't get the impact of that until I saw my youngest brother, Daniel, coming home with stories of kids making fun of him and his nose. So he breathed a little differently when he was younger and, and, and he, it, he would whistle when he would breathe because his nostrils were different sizes. Mm. So right in first grade, kids pointed that out and made fun of his nose and, and the way he sounded. And he kept asking me, why? Why, why did they say things? Do my nose, when he walked yeah. up to me, he said, do my, do my nose holes look different? And I couldn't tell him that he grew, he, he was born with a cleft palate wow. and he had to get his entire cartilage on his nose reconstructed, but he was too young to know something like that. So we were kind of waiting until he was of age, right. but it made me ball my fist up in anger because I really wanted to just go and hurt these kids yes. back the way they hurt my right. brother. Mm -hmm. But instead my mom taught my brother um, to focus on the things that made him so handsome, his beautiful eyes. He's the only one in our family that has curled lashes. He's <laughs> funny. He um, played sports so well. And today he's more confident than all of us mys in the family, including yes. me. And I'm yes. sitting up here on the show. <laughs> we love yes. Daniel. Yeah, he's so, so fun. He's so, he's so animated. Oh, yes. 
Valley, and he also turned something negative into a positive. Yes. He owns it. He does, yeah. and he's studying to be a, a stand-up comic like you, Lonnie. Yeah. And he oh, stands up awesome. there and he laughs at these setbacks. But not every kid has that. So it is important for the kids to teach to learn that everybody has a story. Learn their story and love people through their story. That's right. Yes. Yes. That's right. Um, I have to say, this girl is very strong because it takes a lot to shave your head mm -hmm. in the first place yes. and then go back to school where those bullies, you know, are. But what I love about Lulu is that she uh, changed the narrative, mm -hmm. regained her power yes. and her control and said, you know what? You will never, ever take a wig off my head again because I am going to define what is beautiful to me. Yes. And I'm going to walk into that school and own who I am. I love it. And that is powerful. Yes, that it is. is beautiful. And that is something that we all can learn from, including her bullies. Yeah. Exactly. And you know what, Lulu? If you want to wear a wig, you continue to wear a wig. And believe me, they ain't going to touch you no more, girl, because you done showed them already. Yes, this and is us. such a, you know, I like stories like this yeah. because it teaches us even as women, how to be strong. Yep. And that's why I like the ending. The, 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 the beginning was bad. Yeah. But that ending, she changed shows the narrative. You, she changed the yeah. whole narrative. Changed it's so story. important. And we I'm all have an inspiring. Yeah. It's inspiring. Yeah. We all do. Very, you know, sometimes very. we can have tough days, we can have bad days, and we think, you know, oh my gosh, life is so rough, whatever the case may be. And then you hear this young girl's story, and look what she's gone through. Man. Some of us have not had a day like that, and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, woe is me. And here she is mm -hmm. turning it around and turning it into a Why are kids so cruel, learn. though? That is, I'm Why? sorry. No, no. Well, how are we raising our kids that they don't understand kindness? I don't get it. Do you know the, the courage it takes to, I don't want to call it courage, but there's another word for it, that to walk up to somebody and snatch their wig? Yeah. Like, what are we teaching our children? Sometimes. I wonder if the parents saw that video, what they would think. I mean, but I was, I was, I was bullied in a, yeah. in a different kind of way. Um, my sister and I were on TV at a very young age, and some kids thought automatically um, we were better than anyone yeah. else. And what I realized is sometimes it's the popular kids who are bullying, and sometimes kids want to join that crowd, yep. so they'll just say whatever they have to say. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, 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 it's hurtful, and I'm just grateful I had my sister because we didn't have to be popular back then. You know, I had my own little, little yep. group, but I'd rather be nice and kind than be mean and popular, yeah. you know? But you know, this is the thing, too. I feel really bad for kids of today, because back in our day, you know, back, back in, in my day, day you know, <laughs> bullying, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. Lulu has to still relive this, no matter yeah. what. It's been put on the internet. Yeah. And this is the reason why we really do have, bullying has changed. Because when people try to say, oh, you know, bullying is not that big of a, you know, and what? That, it's different now. It's different than when Major. I was a kid, because I didn't have the internet and, mm -hmm. and telephones and cell phones. So now we really do have to get on parents and the schools to show that bullying is not right. Not okay. And, and not Community. And for those people that are standing by watching, today, if you're in school and yes. you see, you kids are the ones that have eyes on the ground. You guys are the ones that see things before teachers or cameras. Yep. When you see something wrong, say something. Stand speak up. up. Yeah, Stand don't up film it. Like whoever yeah. filmed this, yes. don't film it. There's always a punk that's out there sitting to, to sit there and film it. Don't be that person, man. Don't be that guy. That's wow. Right. Well, Lulu definitely deserves an award for her courage and bravery. And speaking of awards, Mark Anthony's producer, Carlos Escalona Cruz, <laughs> was awaiting his Grammy for his work on Mark's children's album and was so excited when he saw the award arrive. That is, until he checked the plaque. That's because the Academy accidentally sent him Justin Bieber's <gasps> Despacito Grammy by mistake. Oh you see gosh. this? Cruz posted a picture of him with the Grammy on Instagram with the caption, this is the funniest way to start 2018. Wow. So ladies, have you ever been sent something by mistake and what did you do? You know, I get a lot of packages. Um, they mix it up in my condo. They mix up okay, our packages. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always like, if there's Amazon Prime packages, I'm like, ooh, I know this is something good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, I like Wait, shake what do it you up. Do? I shake it up. I'm like, ooh. You get nosy. Ooh. Yeah, do you ever open nosy. it, Lonnie? No, I give okay. it to them. You know, because yes. they give it to me. So I'm like, I'm yeah, not going to yeah, do yeah. it, you know. Oh, my God. Jeannie, we had the weirdest thing ever happen to us over what Christmas. Happened? 
the debacle of the package that arrived at Lily's. Oh my God. Oh, what happened? so no, weird. No, I'm still mad about this. I'm Tell sensitive about Quick. this. Okay, I sent. Maybe the USPS can help us. <laughs> okay, mom, okay. I sent um, Adrian's lit daughter, Lily, a beautiful gift of Too Faced chocolate t cosmetics. You can't get it in stores because it's sold out, right? And she, I didn't hear from her after Christmas, and that's not like Lily. So yeah. I was like, I wonder if she got it. I waited till I saw Adrian at work. I asked Adrian, did Lily ever get my gift? And she was like, no, let me call her and ask. She called her and asked, and Lily said, oh yeah, I tell her I said thanks, you know, I, I tried to text her. So when I got in touch with Lily, she was like, no, thank you, I just, I, I, I hope you got my message. I was like, you don't sound like a girl who got the makeup gift that you would have wanted. Yes. Like, what's she going on? So she goes, confused. no, I really, I really liked the blanket. It was a cool blanket, and I didn't know what to do, and I was like, blanket? I ain't sending <laughs> you no blanket, what's that? <laughs> I, Lily got a yin and yang sign furry blanket. Random. From Jeannie Ma. Just because I'm Asian, I'm not sending stuff like that to your kids. <laughs> don't even How start. How that happen? We still don't know. Somebody's gift, obviously during Christmas, there's a lot going on at the post office. Yes. Somehow the gifts got switched and instead of Lily getting the Too Faced chocolate makeup, she, she got a blanket that but was, was furry with a yin yang symbol. Was and the yin and yang addressed to you? Yes, and it was from well, Jeannie. And my handwriting's still on there, so I don't know. There's somebody out there wearing my chocolate cosmetics. Uh -huh. I'm missing a you blanket. Can you help us? We don't know what happened. Do you have a tracking number? Yes, I have a tracking number, and it says that the package arrived there. But I walked. You the sure you wasn't drunk one no. night and doing packages? No, no. We low key were like Mama Mai, because she's no, the one that took true. it to the. But Post Mama might office. be doing funny things because here's what happened. So Mama <laughs> Mai has moved in with me, right? Right. And just recently, I received a whole bunch of boxes from Amazon. I was like, what is this? I opened them up, and they were 150 blow-up dolls. What? So I was like, oh, no, no, this is not mine. It was like a bunch of girls like, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Sex dolls? Yes, blow-up sex blow dolls. Blow-up dolls, yes. You still got some? No! no. no. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm so asking. Wants to give them as gifts. I was asking, asking for a friend. For so friend. anyway, I sealed it up and I was like, that is not mine. I sent it back, right? In a couple days, Mama Mai, she's like, you see anything They mail for me my name? I'm like, no, what are you talking about? They mailed the doll, the girl, like this? I'm like, why do you want that? She, no. <laughs> She knows that I'm living alone these days because I'm I'm divorced. So yeah. she got nervous that I'm living at home by myself. So <laughs> she sent out and said that if I posted on my Instagram, they would give them for free to me. They sent 150 dolls to my house so she could blow them up and make my house look like I'm always having a party. <laughs> this is very home alone of her. It's very nifty. What is that? Yeah, it's very Kevin. Can you imagine her taking a picture and you got all these dolls and looking like this? I know. <laughs> It's so wrong. Oh, or somebody so sneaking in your window, like, what kind of party is this? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's not. Oh, man, you gotta be Lord. careful. If your parents don't speak English well, She just loves you, out, though. Man. She did it all in love. You know, I'm I'm Team Mama Mai. Oh, yeah, my I God. Love Team you. Mama Mai. You yes. get any packages, Tam? Yes. Huh? You get any? You keep, you always get packages. I try to keep yours sometimes, uh, but yeah. No, I, I, I do, but it's so boring. It's just cleaning supplies. That's oh, really? Oh, no, I'm glad I give them back. Nobody is stealing Tam's packages. No, no, I never okay. have that problem. Nobody wants that, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, from winning Grammys to winning gold medals, the 2018 Winter Olympics starts next Friday. Yes! And so With me and Adrian's favorite film right now, Obsessed. I, Tanya, getting so much attention lately, I'm sure all eyes will be on the figure skating. Mm -hmm. One of the things people love about figure skating are the bright, colorful outfits. However, that wasn't always the case. Back in the 1988 Olympics, Katarina Witt, a competitor from East Germany, made headlines for performing in a skirt which barely covered her rear end. Due to the controversy, the International Skating Union chose to implement the, quote, Katarina rule, which made it mandatory for women to wear a skirt that covered their hips and butt ah. and also required that women covered their midriffs. Well, times have changed and the ban was ultimately lifted in 2003 and since then, the Olympic figure skating dress code has been relatively subjective, at least for women. So ladies, if there was a rule named after you, what rule would it be? I'd have the Adrian rule, which is like when you go into restaurants in Miami, they're like, you have to have a shirt on. Let me explain. When okay. I was younger and in 3LW, I never wore a shirt, ever. I literally wore bras and bikini tops on every red carpet. That was on oh TRL. My oh my goodness. Adrian. Oh, every day, every outfit. 
carpet. Yeah. I never had a shirt yeah. on. It was like, girl, must yeah. wear a shirt to enter restaurant. I like, like them days. Look no, at that, girl. You guys, this AJ, was you look amazing, though. Thank you. This is on Total Request Live TRL back in the day. Wow. And I went on with a denim bikini top. Like, where is my shirt? That's because you, well, how old were you then? Star. 14. Oh, yeah, 14, 14, 15? Yeah, that's why. Yeah, where's my shirt? Wear a shirt. That's, that's it. That's the rule. That's what you do when you 14, 15. Shirt. The rule is wear a shirt. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> Your rules <laughs> wear a shirt. Put on a shirt. <laughs> All right. Sam, you got something? Um, okay, well, I guess people are always saying, you know, you dress so um, elegantly, if that's a word, and you're, you know, you're very sophisticated. So I would kind of like have a rule um, if you want to be uh, sexy and classy at the same mm -hmm. time, uh, I would have a rule called a classy sneak peek. Meaning, if you want to be classy and sexy at the same time, make sure you don't show your boobs, your legs, and your shoulders all at once. Choose one or two. So mm -hmm. like you see in this dress right here, I'm showing my yeah. leg. Yeah. And then also showing my shoulders, but I'm not showing any Ooh. cleavage. But so Araya is still in the but, picture, though. Yeah, she she's really is. Stealing. She's doing she's, the whip. She's your accessory. And watch me nay nay. That's what she's doing. That's what it looks like. Yeah, oh, wow. my little mini me. That's, That's a great girl. rule. She That's did a great look, fashion rule. She did look at me and say, Wow, mommy, you look so beautiful. Oh, I, like, I love it. Oh, my God, so I love that girl sweet. so much. Yes, I love, I love it. Yeah. Lana, you've one... been getting into fashion, too. You know what? Mine would be cover your tatas up in the air conditioning. <laughs> oh, yes. We you recently that. I had Earlier that. this week. Yeah, because yeah, you know, them nips start going and it's over. Oh, yeah. no. Cover them up, all right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, working around like fashion or being around women who are, you know, talking about style and, and beauty all the time, you always get told that you're too old for certain things. Mm. And I hate the word age appropriate. Yes. I hate thinking you can't wear certain things after yes. 40 or 50 or whatever. Let them know. So I always say that you're only getting old when your dreams become regrets. Meaning, it doesn't have to do with fashion. It doesn't even have to do with style. When you feel yourself, you can feel confident to wear a thigh-high slit. You can wear a skirt, however, right for you. As long as you feel confident and sexy, it's more about age being related to not having to regret something. Don't right. look back and say, I wish I could wear a skirt, a short skirt, or short shorts. If you want to feel good, do it. Yeah, it's your yeah. time. It's finally February. Love is in the air. And with Valentine's yes. Day less than two weeks away, many singles are frantically looking for that special someone to spend February 14th with. But if you haven't had luck finding a Valentine yet, you're not alone. Rapper and reality star Safari recently took his search for a Valentine's date to the gram, posting a shirtless selfie with the caption, will you be my Valentine? I want a woman to love that I won't get tired of or annoy, annoy me and support me. Where are thou? 10,000 comments or 500,000 likes, and I'm dropping something special for the ladies. Hashtag, and I don't want no one famous. Mm. So, well, 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 well. So, ladies, do you think this is the best way to go about getting a Valentine's Day date? Well, his abs look on point. His stomach looks right. Yeah, but why is he got to do it for 500 likes or 10,000 comments or whatever? Like, why is there got to be a price for your love? Well, I think he's saying if he gets that many likes, yeah, that he he'll... something special. Right. But, but that, that to me lost it. I think I thought it was kind of cute in the beginning when I thought, oh my God, he's really throwing it out there to just see what people come back with because yes. he'd like to take somebody out. I don't know, I'm like Why is he... hopeless romantic. But, but when my he... thing is, what woman's house is he at because he's in front of shoes? <laughs> It's you like he's in a wardrobe room. He could be on set somewhere. No, nah, you Maybe don't do that, set. player. Yeah, no. no, I see the steam thing. You know how sometimes they steam Yeah, it looks clothes. like he's in a style like wardrobe. closet. Yeah, yeah. But, but still, that could send the wrong message. He's got a bunch of <laughs> exactly. heels in the back of him. Exactly, that's like the wrong. If you're gonna do the message, do it right, Safari. All right? <laughs> he looks good, though. He does, he does. Look good. He looks very nice. Oh, he get girls. Yeah, he Why he trying to act out. like? He just, wants, he just wants some likes and some followers. He know he get, he get bitches all day. Hey! <laughs> okay. I have a question, though. Yes. Do you think this actually hey. works? Like, do you think that yes. people can find love on, like, like this on Instagram? Like, hey, get at all me. All day long. Is he looking for love or a good time? I think he's looking for love in this case because okay. he's saying, 
that uh, he doesn't want to be with anyone famous. Like, maybe okay. he's he looking for a tagline. Ain't he on one of them uh, reality shows? Yes, but. So he's looking for a tagline. That's what he's looking for. Just tell the truth, okay? He's looking he... for follows and likes. He said it straight up. And a tagline and a storyline. That's what I'm saying. I keep saying uh, a tagline. He's looking yes, for a storyline for that show. See, that's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So he, he casting. That's what he doing. You know what, All though? Right. When you ask that, though, yeah. Adrian, I do believe that women will really think that there's a chance. I mean, yeah. look at groupies or people that, you know, go waiting outside hotel rooms for their, you know, celebrity soulmate. People some really have think... actually gotten together, That's though. There I'm are saying. some men that have married girls that, like, were their fans. Well, yeah. there are a lot of people on social media that hook up through social media. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they really have. And you can have really good relationships with people. Um, there's a guy that I talked to. Well, it's a lot of guys I talked to. <laughs> I better not say which one. Okay, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna talk to him first. And if he says it's okay, then I'm gonna come back and I'll give you something special for the ladies. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Wait, I will say this. Do you remember when Ray J had a show? It was, um... Which one? Yeah, no, that was Flavor of oh, Love, the, and then the Ray J had one, too. What was Ray J's called? About finding love. For the love of Ray yeah. J. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. They had a lot of seasons of those yes. shows, and, and nobody found love. Well, they don't never really find love on those shows. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's confusing. But I think when it's social media, I mean, really, you seriously can, if you find somebody that kind of, you know, tweets like I, you or, you know, Instagrams like you, you can I, find somebody. I think maybe he wants to see what his options are. I think he might enjoy the fact of looking at all of these women who want to have yes. a date with him. Yes. And it might be easier for And it might a be chance. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. Absolutely. <laughs> now, when it comes to fashion, not everyone can pull a cheetah girl look, just like our girl, Adrienne. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and recently, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Will Smith, posted video to his Instagram of him rocking some very fresh cheetah pants. Well, one person who seemed very confused was Will's son, Jaden. Jaden commented on the pic, saying, quote, say, so uh, no one has nothing to say about his cheetah pants? But when I wore cheetah pants, it was a problem. So, ladies, do you think Jaden has he looks a right? Cute. I know. I don't know why people were giving him yeah. fun. Yeah. But do you think Jaden has a right to be annoyed that his dad gets away with something that he couldn't have gotten away his with? His dad is the Fresh Prince yes. of Bel Air. He could do whatever he wants. Yeah. For life. For life. For life. For life. That is the Fresh Prince right there. I am so happy Will Smith joined Instagram. Me too. You have Me too. Him. I mean, he. I mean, he takes you wherever he goes. You gonna go with him, and it is hilarious. So he can wear whatever he wants. Yes. Jaden, don't you smart your daddy? You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> your dad was very cheetalicious, and I was into it. I know. I love it. And he I edits and it. everything. It's really good. You, you know. put me on to Will Smith. Did you ever meet? Instagram. Did you ever meet uh, Will Smith? I did. I did an audition with him once. Yeah, I met Jaden, and I'm, let me tell you my, my story. I was doing this um, Disney, it was a Disney show called yeah. Kicking It. Yes, and, I remember that. Yeah, and Jaden loves to do karate. So yes. he wasn't on the show, but all of his friends were on the show, so he came. And one day, I'm going to tell you something. Will Smith and Jada Pickett have really raised some good kids. Yeah. They yes. were very memorable. So awesome. He was like, he was about 13 or 14 at the time. Very memorable, yeah. a really good kid. And even when we went to eat, let me tell you how disciplined he was. He didn't go for the candy like I was, right? <laughs> he was like, Miss Lonnie, get you a salad first. And I was like, okay, because he got salad. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm telling you, he is the greatest thoughtful. kid. They Very thoughtful, very um, so, and, and has a really good sense of humor. Yeah. And this shows it right here. Yeah, yeah. That, so. I love very that. creative, too. But I think kids. it's inevitable that your parents, you know, Are might embarrass you. Like, I'm not looking towards that, forward to that moment that I embarrass Araya I am. And, and Aiden, but I know it's going to happen. I mean, I even embarrassed my, my brothers. T and I used to uh, pick them up at school. You know how there's like the pickup line? I remember Taj going to grade school and I was just so happy to pick him up. And I was like, hey Taj, hey Taj, look, I'm driving, I'm picking you up. And he was like, nah, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Can't you see? He just drive, drive, drive over there, and then I will walk to you. And then he was like, don't ever, ever do that again. I was like, oh man. So it's inevitable. Yeah, you just kind of like... have to laugh at the situation. Yes. Yeah. Get right back into some more girl chat. Yeah. 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 It's time for Will's Hotline Bling. Call her. Hey, Hi. what's your name and where are you from? My name's Jennifer. 
LA, but right now I'm in Italy studying abroad, but we're on school trip, so I'm in Sicily, and I was at dinner, and my phone was dying, so I had to come back to the hotel, <gasps> and I'm in the hotel lobby. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! That, that is, is so cool! cool. Buongiorno. Okay, so you're in Italy. How is your night going right now? It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm still a little excited. Can't even talk right. <laughs> girl, you want to? You know, I want to know how are those Italian men treating you? Ooh, girl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm have you tried? Have you uh, tried the what is the ice cream there? Gelato. 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 Have you tried oh, it? Yeah, it's so good. Yes. good. So, right. are you keeping up with the real while you're abroad? Girl, it's hard because the channel's not here, but I keep up on Instagram and YouTube videos. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, why is it so important to you to keep up with the real? Oh man, I see myself in each and every one of you. Oh, Adrian, my... girl, Latinx represent. Yes. Bonnie, girl. Oh, my yes. She's so funny. Tamara. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I see myself in every one of you, and you guys make me feel like, oh, yeah, I feel that too. Oh, I'm going to experience that in the future, you know? So oh. it's a little. That is I'm hugging you. Love that. Here. I'm it's hugging you. We uh, love that. Well, we heard that you also liked a look that I wore this week. My shirt is from Lost Inc. Inc., and it was $49. My pants were also from Torrid, which was $58.90. What did you like about it? I just love plaid jeans right now. Those are really good. <laughs> okay. And then the way that little thing on your waist goes. Yeah, yeah. clenched. Yeah. Yes. 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 That smells popping, okay? <laughs> cool? You happy? Yes! <laughs> I love it! They'll be new clothes! They'll be new! They're not, they're they're not what I wore. They'll yes. be brand new, okay? I don't want Clarify that right now. I ain't gonna send you mine. Just send it to her, okay? It. But thank you so much for chatting with us, Jennifer. We can't wait to see how you look. I'm very excited about our next guest because they have three things in common. They're stand-up comedians, writers, and they always bring the laughs. She's the executive producer, and he's the host of True TV's talk show, The Game Show. Please welcome the always funny Wanda Sykes and Guy oh. Brennan. Yes. Well, you know so what? excited to have you. you. And you know, we had a lot to talk, a lot to talk about, but first, Wanda. Yes. You addressed Monique's, um, her recent accusation <laughs> of Netflix gender <laughs> and bias, ra bias racial thing, uh -huh. you know, for the half million dollars for the special. Um, but you had something to say. What was your thoughts? Well, um, yeah, I, I had to speak out because, you know, Monique made a, made a good point. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's legitimate. There is something going on where uh, women across the board are being paid less, and especially women of color are being paid even <laughs> lower than that. So, so I, I, I thanked her for, for speaking up, but I also said that, you know, I'm not for a boycott of Netflix, <laughs> though. I'm not, you know, I'm not, that's, that's uh, too much. For, uh, I'm not saying boycott Netflix, but right. um, I, you know, I found another place. I went to Epics and, and shot oh, myself. Yeah. That's right. Available on Hulu. Yes. There <laughs> you go. All right. Now, before yes. becoming stand-up comedians, you both had regular jobs, like normal jobs, which were, uh, you were a lawyer. You were studying to be a lawyer. What kind of law? Uh, I was studying satisfying my mother's hopes and dreams for me, <laughs> law. Yes. Like, I just went to law school, essentially, to <laughs> shut her up. She is an older Jewish woman, and she has needs in this world. I hear that. Uh, and then eventually, I just decided to disappoint her professionally. <laughs> You have not disappointed at all, though. No, no, no. I have a TV show, but she's still like, but you're never going to be a lawyer. Aww. <laughs> I love it. I, now, I, Wanda, you actually worked for the National Security Agency. Does right. that mean that you were like a secret spy or something? 
You know, it, that sounds sexy. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's not at all what I did at What'd all. What'd you do? I pretty much bought stuff. Oh, yeah. wow. I was a contracting specialist, so uh, they would just bring me, like, diagrams and schematics, and I'm like, all right, this is what you want. I'll, <laughs> I'll try to buy it. Okay. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and speaking uh, of Secret Service, Guy, you once had the Secret Service show up at your door in college. Why do you have to bring this up here, Jane? <laughs> because we need some answers. It's real. Tasteful. Yes. Um, when I was uh, a student at UC Berkeley, I wrote for the campus paper, and I, like, forgot that I had a deadline, and so I decided to just throw something together. So I wrote about how it was the week of our big game against Stanford, and they were fancy, uh, and they had just gotten Chelsea Clinton as a student, and so I said that we needed to go show that we weren't fancy. We were just uh, hardworking, uh, you know, scrappers. Um, and I included the line, uh, Chelsea Clinton represents the Stanford ethos of establishment worship, which must be subverted and destroyed. And then the AP, uh, the, AP uh, the Associated Press quoted it as, Chelsea Clinton, dot, 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 must be destroyed. Oh, my God. Um, so the uh, Secret Service arrived at my house two days later to determine no. whether I was a threat. No and way. And I am a threat, but only to myself. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> How many people in life can say that? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, that Wanda, guy. <laughs> you actually have eight-year-old twins. Yes, yes. Oh, that is so cool. That's so cool. Either of them realize that you are a celebrity, that you're famous. They have finally caught on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They finally mm -hmm. caught on. Because uh, usually if I'm out with them and someone says, hey, Wanda, and they're like, do you know that person? I say, I, you know, I think I went to school with them. <laughs> I'm not sure. And now, you know, it's, it's happened so often that my son, he, he just put it together. Because we were in D.C. and this guy drives by and he goes, Wanda Sykes. <laughs> and they, they go, they, you don't know that person. <laughs> but now, but now my son, he thinks he's funny so now like whenever I walk in you know I walk you know get up go down for breakfast mm -hmm. he's like it's Wanda side guy I heard that our very own Lonnie Love holds a special place in I your know, heart I was like what do you tell us why it's very true Lonnie and I know each other from working together on Chelsea lately a bunch yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. um and uh, one time at Chelsea Lately, I mentioned on the round table that I had never kissed a woman in my life, and Lonnie Love decided that it was her responsibility to <laughs> end, that, end that run. Mark that off your bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. How she, was it? She, was it good? It was magnificent. Oh, cool. It was yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. It changed your life. Wow, <laughs> Lonnie. I, hey. Honestly, I don't know that I've ever kissed someone where I felt that much like the lady. <laughs> <laughs> I oh love Well, you know, that's how things happen, you know. <laughs> oh, I am God. so honored, though, that both of you are on. But, Wanda, you have been making us laugh for over 30 yes. years. Yes. 30 years. Amazing. I mean, amazing. Um, do you ever still get nervous performing? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. seriously. It's like if uh, I, I got to get that first laugh, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you're on stage, as soon as you get that first laugh, then I'm like, good. But before them, I, you know. Butterflies, exactly. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I am, too, you know. It's even like when you come out here, I, mean, I don't like... get them in my vagina like Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Like Your show, Talk Show the Game Show, is a matchup between a game show and a talk show uh, where three celebrities actually compete for the title of Best Guest of the Night. Now, Guy, you may be the host <laughs> of the show, but I want to know, what is your ultimate guest talk show story? Well, before we go any further, we did bring you a gift. Mm -hmm. Oh, yay! Oh, on oh, Talk oh, Show the Game Show. <laughs> this would earn you three points. Ooh, you're oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. The best way to earn points on Talk to the Game Show is a good celebrity name droppy yeah. story. Oh. Uh -huh. And there was one magical evening where Rumor Willis decided to make me her pet gay. Uh, <laughs> I had co starred in a movie you. with her then stepdad, Ashton Kutcher. Uh -huh. um, oh, and she you. came up to me at the after party and was like, hey, there's this guy, like, and she showed me a photo of him, and she's like, do you think he's gay? And I was like, he's 24. They all look gay when they're 24. <laughs> um, and she took me to a club, and we hung out with him for, like, three hours. Um, and then we were in the car going back to her place, um, and he started freestyle rapping out of nowhere. And he said, I can freestyle rap about anything. Give me any topic. I can freestyle rap about anything. 
and she said Scooby-Doo. And then he continu uh, commenced to rap for five minutes and never mentioned anything remotely related to Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and at that moment, and at no moment before that, do I realize this might be Zac Efron. Now, I was exceedingly drunk by this point in time, so I needed to figure out once uh -huh. and for all whether, whether it was Zac Efron. <laughs> yeah. So I am not unfamiliar with Zac Efron's Wikipedia entry, so I asked him where he lived. He dodged the question. Then I asked him, Zac, or I said, um, hey, are you half Jewish? And he said, well, it's my dad's dad, so I'm like a third Jewish. Um, and I said, that's Zac Efron. Uh, that's a kid who learned fractions on a soundstage. Oh <laughs> no my God. No offense to Mara. Okay, yes, oh, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. That's that a is. story, oh okay? My God. Well, let's do a cheers to talk yes. about the game show yes. right here. Show right. Right. Show. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for this. Thank you. Okay, so Wanda, you're not only the executive producer of the show, but right. you also have been a guest. Yes. Are you competitive? Oh, I'm very competitive. I okay. want to win. I mean, I yeah, I go for the juggler. <laughs> I. Uh...